Hey, hope you're doing well. In today's video, I will be running over cold emails 101 as the title suggests, right? And what I'll be talking about in today's video is how to write a cold email, which actually converts. And this is a different type of video because a lot of videos that you might find online, they're giving you different scripts. They're telling you write this, write that. These are the specific words, but rather my goal in today's video is to teach you how to think about writing effective code emails so that you can do this yourself and get results for your own business, for your own offer. If you're running a lead generation agent so that you can book sales costs for yourself so that you can book sales costs for your own clients. And you're just able to learn and understand how to exactly do this step by step and kind of what goes through my mind as I write code emails, which kind of just converts. So this is what we'll be covering today. We'll be covering four things. The first is what is a code email? The second is the important things to understand about code emails. The third are the general guidelines. And finally, the fourth thing is a breaking down the parts of a successful code email. And again, my goal today is to not necessarily give you the specific step-by-step, -step, the specific words as to what you want to use, because that can change. But if you understand what makes an email convert, you're able to adapt and still get results even six months from now when the quote unquote winning script that other people give you just, you know, stops working, right? So who am I jumping right into this? I'm Jimmy Fung. I'm a 23 year old from Canada and I run my own lead generation agency called salesway.io. I've been running it for the last year and a half since October, 2022. And collectively I have generated over half a million dollars in revenue for my own business, for my own agency. During this time period, I have worked with 50 plus B2B clients in a wide variety of industries from recruitment agencies to marketing agencies to software development agencies, IT companies, software companies. And I have booked over a thousand sales calls for myself, for my clients while sending over a million plus cold emails in the process. So I kind of just know what works and what doesn't work as well. I'm also the founder of inboxlab.io. It's a consulting program, consulting business where I worked with over 80 plus people at the time of this video, where I help them start and build their own lead generation agencies as well. And I share this with you to explain that the stuff that I'm sharing with you today, not only have I seen success using these things myself, but all the other people who follow what I share and take action, they're also seeing results and making money with these same exact strategies as well. And like everyone else, when I first started my business in October, 2022, I didn't have a clue in the world what I was doing. I didn't understand marketing. I didn't understand sales. I certainly didn't know how to write cold emails. And I kind of just tried a bunch of different things, failed at uh, equally as much as many things, and just over time figured out what works and what doesn't work as well. So jumping right into what is a cold email, right? So using ChatGPT, I just asked what is a cold email? It says, a cold email is an unsolicited email sent to a recipient without prior contact or a prior relationship. It is typically used in professional contexts such as for sales, networking, job searching, or business development. The goal of a cold email is to initiate a conversation to create a connection or gain an opportunity that wasn't previously available. So here are the five key characteristics of a cold email. You can pause this video and read through this yourself. It's unsol unsolicited. So the recipient did not request the email and does not know the sender. It is personalized. Well, I personally think it needs to be relevant as well, but effective cold emails are tailored to the recipients addressing their specific needs or interests are relevant. It's concise, it's value orientated, and it has a clear call to action and clear next step. So ChatGPT does a really good job summarizing what a cold email is, but a lot of people get kind of confused with cold emails and email marketing because they both use the word email and in a way they're both used for marketing slash sales. So I actually found this diagram on Google, which kind of talks about the differences. So cold email prospecting, which is what we're talking about is more so on the sales side. So software sales emails, information emails, demo emails, asking to set up a time versus email marketing or marketing emails, which are more so newsletters or welcome emails, promotional emails, that type of thing, right? So an example of an email, you know, email marketing would look something like this, right? This is an email that I found from Nike where they're just talking about discounts or selling you a product. So it's a very different type of email from cold email. So what we're talking about today is more so on the cold email side of things, as opposed to these marketing type of emails. So jumping into important things to understand about cold email. So before we go into the guidelines in terms of what makes an effective cold email, there are a couple key things that you want to just keep in mind. 
The first is that you are reaching out to random people online, meaning you're reaching out to people who do not know you and people who just don't trust you. So you need to understand that by default, you are perceived as another internet scammer until proven otherwise. It is on you to prove otherwise that you're not just a random internet scammer. The second is since cold emails is used to reach out to random people, meaning you're not sure if the people you reach out to, if they have a problem that your service can solve, you don't even know that there's no intent there. So what that means is volume is crucial, right? And I actually use this phrase a lot. It's called volume negates luck. And as you can see in this diagram, the more volume you do, the more likely you are to succeed. And the main reason why you just need straight volume is because again, you're reaching out to random people. You don't know if they even need what you have to offer. So the more people you reach out to, the more likely you are to find someone with the exact problem that your service solves. Now, here's a key note. I might be saying volume negates luck, but what I'm not telling you to do, I'm not telling you to spam a million emails kind of just hoping for the best. You're not spraying and praying. What you're doing is you're combining high volume with effective copywriting, effective leads building, effective strategy in order to get good results. So sending 1 million emails that where you're just writing complete random words will not work. If you're sending a million emails to the wrong people, it will also not get you results. So the third is you need to make sure that people want what you are actually selling because there, if there is zero demand for your service, sending a bunch of cold emails will not be the reason that people just buy what you have to offer. So cold emails is just a channel that allows you to generate a bunch of traffic and a bunch of attention onto your business. Basically, you are just reaching out to a bunch of people, thousands of people a day, up to thousands of people a day and seeing if they're interested. But if you are selling an umbrella to people or to someone who lives in the desert where it just does not rain ever, you will still not get results. Even if you're emailing a million people, even if you reach a billion people and all 1 billion of those people live in the desert, you will not get any results. However, it is also important to understand what makes a cold email work and what makes it not work because it isn't necessarily just the words that you're using. There are really just three things that I have found to contribute to success of cold emails. And I put this diagram together. So, the first is email deliverability, right? So obviously if you're setting up these cold email accounts, you need to make sure your stuff makes it to the inbox. There's a couple of different things you can do, right? Uh, warming up your email accounts, making sure you're not blasting a hundred cold emails out of each single email account. Make sure you're spin taxing, make sure you are spam checking your emails. Those are things you need to do to make sure that your emails actually make it to the inbox. Cause you could have the best leads list, the best copy, the best strategy, but if no one reads your email, it's not going to work. The next is leads list, right? So pretty straightforward. If you are trying to pitch marketing agencies, but your entire email list is realtors, you're not going to get results, right? In fact, you will get blocked and it will mess with your email deliverability because people will mark your emails as spam because it's just not meant for them. And finally, the third aspect is the copywriting. So the specific words that you're saying, the offer that you're using and each of these three things, I would say if I was to give a number to it is roughly a third of the equation to success with cold emails. And if you're missing any of these three things, you will not see success with cold emails. So here are some general guidelines. So after sending well over a million cold emails and booking thousands of sales calls, here are the key things that I have learned and observed. So the best cold emails that I have ever sent, the best cold emails I've ever received are generally 20 seconds or shorter to read. And this is the website you could use to go and double check that. The next is the best emails are concise and straight to the point. Every word and sentence is adding value to the message, meaning there's just zero fluff. There's no BS. Everything moves the conversation forward. It has a focus on the reader rather than you. So you don't write a, want to write an email where all you're talking about is I do this. I am this. We are this. We are this. We got founded in 2017, you know, blah, 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 because people don't care. People only care about how you can help. Them. So make sure to focus on the reader rather than on you. The best emails are written with simple words where even a fifth grader can understand it is written in a natural way. So not super corporate vibes. So uh, I know for me, before I built this business, I, I was actually working at IBM. I was working in sales and I know because IBM is a very corporate type of business, one of the largest tech companies really, but it's still very corporate. -y. So a lot of people write code, write emails like 
hope you're doing well, hope you had an amazing weekend, stuff like that. But that's not something that you would say in a natural conversation. So refrain from using that type of language. Make sure you're not overselling or not listing all the benefits or key features and make sure you're focusing on relevancy, right? You need to be doing research on your prospects. These are some of the general guidelines that I've found the most successful cold emails to all have. So if we were to break down the individual parts of a successful cold emails, every successful cold email has the following four components. The first is the intro. The second is the offer. The third is case studies, proof or a guarantee. And the fourth is a call to action. Now, there are obviously a million different ways to write effective cold emails, but to keep it simple, I'll be explaining to you how to write an effective cold email using these four components. And if you are ever confused or you don't know how to write a cold email for yourself, for your offer, for your client's offer, stick to the fundamentals. So jumping into the intro. So here's the intro part of the cold email. And this is where a lot of people online really just teach you to personalize your emails by using things like AI generate first lines or first line compliments or all these other things. And I've tested all of these things as well. And I personally just concluded that they're simply not worth it at all because saying a cheesy line such as, Hey John, I saw you were in LA go Lakers. That will not only not work, but it will work against you because anyone with a brain will see through this line as a BS compliment. And it just comes across as super salesy and super ingenuine. So if you do not want to personalize your cold emails, so sorry, if you do want to personalize your cold emails, what you need to be doing is you need to be doing legitimate research. And that might take you anywhere from five to 15 minutes to research each lead. So what you need to do instead, if you really do want to personalize your emails is you need to be searching that prospect, that person up online. You want to listen to the interviews, the podcasts, stuff like that. And an example of an effective personalized email or personalized intro might be something like this. Let's say I was emailing Elon Musk. Hey, Elon, I listened to your interview with Joe Rogan, where you mentioned that your vision for Tesla is to change the way that people experience driving. So obviously I just came, you know, when I was putting this together, I just came up with this on the spot. So I don't know if he actually said this, he probably didn't, but hopefully you see how, if this were real, it would have taken legitimate research on my end to find this, right? Because this is real. It's not some BS line that AI generated or something I pulled about a city or a restaurant or whatever, right? But what I've found to work best is if you don't want to spend 10 to 15 minutes per lead for research, cause it takes a lot of time. It's just to keep it simple. Use the intro as just a simple icebreaker. So don't overthink it. Use something simple as, Hey Elon, I saw you the CEO of Tesla. So wanted to reach out. So it's nothing too crazy. It's very simple. And that's exactly the point. It breaks the ice without you going over the top. Now, the next aspect is the offer. So this section of the code email is kind of what makes or break your code email, because if it's done poorly, or if it's just missing altogether, you will leave prospects unsure and kind of just confused as to what you do and how you can help them. So what you want to do is make sure you are specific in terms of who you help and the specific result of your service. So I would say something along the lines of reason for reaching out is because we help marketing agencies sign three to five clients in the next 60 days by leveraging our cold email system. So I wouldn't necessarily just copy this offer because again, I came up with this on the spot as I was putting this section together, but notice how specific it is in terms of who the service is for marketing agencies, what the expected outcome of the service is. So three to five clients and in what timeline, so 60 days by leveraging cold emails. So when you're writing your own cold emails, you also want to be split testing your cold emails. You don't want to just be writing one version of email, sending it to a million people. And when it doesn't work, you say cold emails doesn't work. What you need to be doing is split testing rigorously. If you're running ads, as an example, if you've experienced running ads, all the best people who get a lot of result with running ads on Facebook or YouTube, they're coming up with five to 10 versions of a single ad. They're running them against each other and seeing what the top two or the top three performing ads are and allocating the budget towards that. And the same thing you need to be doing is for cold emails. You want to be coming up with a bunch of different split tests, running them, seeing which one works best and allocating your sending volume towards the best performing offers. So for example, if you're selling lead generation uh, services, you want to split test the offer by talking about what you're selling. So here are three different outcomes that you are selling. If you're selling lead generation. The first might be, we help you get a certain number of sales calls. The second might be, we help you get a certain number of clients. And the third might be, we help you build a sales pipeline worth a hundred thousand dollars. Those are three different outcomes. 
three specific end result of your service, but you're able to talk about different things, meaning they might, they might be relevant to different types of people. And you want to be testing this to find out what works the best. Now, another way to approach the offer is thinking about it from the reverse. Let's say you have a client who is running a recruitment agency. Let's say they're recruiting roles for tech companies and we're working with them to generate leads for using cold emails for their own recruitment business. It's not enough to just say, we will help you find a better candidate. We'll find you a better kit faster. We'll find cheaper candidates. That's not enough. What you want to do is approach it from the angle of why would a company such as Microsoft, such as IBM, such as Facebook, such as Apple, why would they want to work with a recruitment agency and pay them money when they're probably paying six figure salaries for in-house recruiters or in-house talent acquisition staff? Think about that and use those reasons to bake them into your offer and test them against each other. So you want to think about these type of questions as you're formulating different offers that you are then using to split test in your cold emails. Now, the next aspect is case studies. So if you're first starting your, your lead generation agency, you probably won't have case studies, but this section is proof that you can do what you just said in your offer. So if you don't have case studies, meaning you just don't have proof that this works, you need to be including a guarantee, right? This way it reduces the risk from your client's point of view. And if you're watching this video and you don't have any case studies and you're telling yourself, oh, Jimmy, but I don't want to include a guarantee. Well, you're probably just not going to get any good results and you'd probably struggle to land clients for yourself, right? That's just the truth. That's the state of the market in 2024. That's just how competitive the business landscape is, because if you don't have a guarantee, it's just not going to work because business owners have tried a bunch of different things. They've been burned before, they've been scammed before. And at this point, they're probably just not willing to pay someone thousands of dollars unless they know that there's some form of risk reversal on their end. But so a simple guarantee such as, and if we don't get you this results, you don't pay. That would work extremely, extremely well. Now there's also a bunch of different ways to work this, but hopefully you get the idea. And if you do have case studies, this is the time to use it. A really good format to do so without writing a whole paragraph about your case study is something simple, such as recently we worked with IBM where we helped them achieve X, Y, and Z results in this timeline using this framework. And as you put together your case study, you also want to try to use a relevant case study in that niche. So if you reach out to tech companies, use another tech company. If you're reaching out to accounting firms, use accounting firms, right? And you want to try to name drop if possible, because it would come across as kind of BS. If you just say, we recently worked with a competitor where we did X, Y, Z, because you're not really saying anything. Anyone could say that, uh, which is why it wouldn't work as well. Now, the final part of an effective cold email is the call to action. The final component is the next step of your cold email. Now there are three types of call to actions that you want to be split testing in your cold emails. The first is a hard call to action. So saying something like, are you free on Thursday or Friday for a quick 50 minute chat? The second is a soft call to action. So mind if I send more info and the third is a value call to action. So put together a quick video running over how we did this. Mind if I share this with you. Now, all three of these call to actions will work. It just depends entirely on who you reach out to and the market sophistication. So you need to make sure you're doing research on the people that you're reaching out to. So if you're reaching out to a market where prospects are just not pitched frequently. So if you're reaching out to, let's say plumbers or roofers, something like that, a hard call to action will work really, really well. You probably cook a bunch of meetings and you will get a ton of replies and book meetings from that. However, if you're reaching out to a market where prospects get pitched left and right, so you're reaching out to marketing agencies where they probably get a bunch of cold emails and DMs every single day, a, card, a hard call to action will probably just not work that well. So what you want to do is split test this yourself because again, all three of these things work. And in terms of the value call to action, the third call to action, you can also test the specific sales asset that you're sending to prospects. So I typically focus on leveraging BSLs. I talk a lot about that and I leverage the VSL as a sales asset, which provides new insights to prospects. But there's a bunch of different sales assets that you can use. You can leverage docs, you can leverage white papers, you could test different types of content. You can test a bunch of different things. The point is, is as long as you're giving value to prospects, then it would work with a value call to action. So that's basically this video. That's basically the breakdown of what makes a successful cold email. Hope you found this video valuable. And again, 
I didn't want to include specific word by word of a cold email because what I wanted to focus on is rather than giving you the answer, I wanted to try my best to teach you and explain to you the theory as to what makes a cold email work and what makes a cold email not work. So hopefully you found this valuable. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.